Cordial, Georgia is famous for two things. The first of which is this giant rocket ship behind me. It's been there since 1969, just off of I-75, about two hours south of Atlanta. That's what makes you get off of the interstate to see what's here, and that's when you find out that little bitty Cordial, Georgia is the watermelon capital of the whole great big world. Come on, let me take you where the food comes from. You've already seen a rocket ship. Now I'm walking in front of a World War II era bomber plane and an escort fighter squadron. So you might think Cordial, Georgia is obsessed with aviation. They're not. You might think they're obsessed with military history. They're not. They are obsessed with America, being Americans, patriotism. They're also obsessed with watermelon which is all part of what makes Cordell the watermelon capital of the world. What's more American than watermelon in the summertime? I've even got my own flock of watermelon queens to Hi. prove it. Hey. Hi. I knocked your crown off. <laughs> you gotta be careful with royalty. feels like we're on a treasure hunt out here. I mean, this just looks to all the world like a field of weeds, but uh, every now and again, you see something kind of special pop up around here. Yeah, here's one right here. Up oh, there, looks oh, good. Oh, look at that, look at that. Wow, wow. To my untrained ear, that sounds like a watermelon that's about ready. Oh yeah, it's good. Got a nice creamy belly and the stem's starting to close up the nutrients so it doesn't need any more. Uh -huh. So it's probably about as ripe as it's gonna get. Is that truly a reliable test? I mean, we yeah. all stand there and tap watermelons. Yeah, Are we a, really doing anything? <laughs> yeah, you're testing the center of it, but the outside is a lot of times, to tell whether it's ripe or not, uh -huh. it's a lot of time based in the stripes. The striping. Yep. So, so this pattern that runs through here, yep. what am I gonna see that's different as that matures and I know it's right. Well, you're gonna see it, a, a lot of times this dark green would uh -huh. be a lot more closed up, but now you got defined lighter stripes. Lines and stripes uh -huh. down through there and it's right here next to it. Or you can look at this one too. In the exact same patch a foot away sits another one. Yep. So how many times will y'all come through and, and pick this same field? Anywhere from four to six times we'll cut five to seven days later we'll come through cut them again and repeat that five or six times and that'll get us cut over a field for the year this plant where it's putting out this melon mm -hmm. is it one plant one one melon or do they produce multiple melons off the same vine it's hard to tell because it's such a tangle uh, of, yeah it's like, all, where's a plant start and where's it end each plant will have a couple different snake heads on it to produce a couple different now you call plants. it a snake head and literally me nor nobody else is going to know what that so means what do you that right there okay but that's that's basically the flower but the fruit sets down here and you can see this is one plant right here uh-huh and you can see it's got vines going everywhere and they probably picked several melons off of off it. of that already yep. so and it may not be up. yeah it may they may not be ready at one time they now, may set at different times here's a little guy in between all the other sizes we've already seen and look at those black stripes uh-huh now why is that that's one of the stripes. pollinators okay now that's another fascinating thing about watermelon everybody's favorite watermelon anymore is seedless watermelon right uh -huh. You ain't got to look for somewhere to spit. Uh -uh. It's a lot more sociable. You're not going to swallow them and grow watermelon plants in your stomach like Grandma told you yep. you would. But if you have a seedless product, 
Where do you get the seeds to grow the next one from? Uh, they have, Cole, how does that happen? They grow seed crops uh, in other countries. It's very popular. They'll grow the seedless watermelons and harvest the white seeds out, or they'll have particular crops to give uh -huh. to, or to sell to the seed programs. Everybody says, well, why don't you plant nothing but seedless watermelons? You can't. You're right. You Mother have Nature a, won't let you do yeah. that, will it? Uh huh. The bees have to go visit one, the seeded, and then go visit the seedless to pollinate the seedless. Every three or four rows that we see across this whole field is seedless watermelon interrupted by a row of seeded watermelon. Well, it's more of usually traditionally the farmers will do it in the row. They'll do in the same row. Yep, in the same row. They'll do four or five, three to five seedless, and then one seeded, and then three to five plants of seedless and, that and one, one seeded. Seeded watermelon plant is what's attracting the bees that are pollinating the seeded melon, and then does the pollen does it drift to the other plants, or is it the bees? Same the bees bee? carrying it to the so other the plants. So the bees picking yeah. up the pollen off of the seeded watermelon. And pollinating the seedless. So that we can have that watermelon. Correct. Otherwise yeah. it wouldn't grow into anything, would it? Nope, uh-uh. Be, still be spitting seeds. middle of June in Georgia. We just spent the morning out in your watermelon field. I would guess it was 105 degrees? Probably somewhere around there, yeah, it was hot. How does your day start every day? What? So usually uh, on my way to work, I'll stop by the field about 7.45, 8 o'clock before we, the crew gets to the shed. So you're going to the field even before you come to an office? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then just kind of see how far along they are, see how much they're gonna try to cut that day, mm -hmm. maybe talk to some cutters and mm -hmm. see what the fruit's looking like. And then we come up to the office up here to the packing shed and we start getting pallets ready, cutting the line on. So you're prepping now, you've got the pallets that things are shipped on, you've got those giant watermelon bins yep. mm -hmm. prepped and ready for that. That's right. Because your goal, once that melon is cut from that vine, the clock starts ticking. Yep, the clock starts ticking and we gotta get it to where it needs to be. It's watermelons, they're big. There's a lot of them. It takes a long time to move them. What, you pick, you take them out of that field. We sat there and watched them bringing them out of the field. We followed the bus full mm -hmm. of them. And it's interesting how they pack watermelons. They're not carrying them in dump trucks or flatbed mm -hmm. trailers. There's cutaway buses. School bus, yep. And you just fill them up to, uh -huh. the, to, the, to the rim as far as they'll go. Bring them in here. That ride, as we followed them back, was probably 20 minutes yep. mm -hmm. from the farm to the loading dock. They started immediately unloading mm -hmm. those melons. What happens then? I mean, it's like ants, just a watermelon chain yep. going through there. So we usually got to start off by cleaning the line if we haven't done it the night before when we get done packing the previous day, which we always try to wash down the line mm -hmm. and start on a clean slate. Um, then what happens is they come in and unload those watermelons onto the belt. Those watermelons run down the conveyor and they go through a washer that we wash with selector side and brushes to brush off all the dirt and grime that come from the field. And then they go up and are graded for hollow heart, bruising, um, scarring, any, defect, any kind anything. of disease, defect, mm -hmm. intrusion, anything they're thrown out. And uh, after that, they're sized according to a 36 count, which is 36 melons in a bin, mm -hmm. 45 count, which is 45 and 60s. Um, after that, we put a label on each individual watermelon and they're kicked off into their size variety. Mm -hmm. And then we pack them and put another bin label on them that they can, any customer can scan with their phone and track it back to where it came right, from, sure. the field, anything down to the melon and then they're loaded into the bins and put directly on a truck within hours of being harvested. Hours? Yes. 
So the watermelons that we just saw them bringing out of that field, from the time they get back to this facility, it's conceivable within three or four hours. The truck, the watermelons that we saw come out of that field are already on a truck that's almost They're already on a truck. About an hour And ago. we got back to this office long enough to sit down and get a bottle of water, get set up and sit in here and have this conversation. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's remarkable. But at the end of the line, you're overseeing the quality in the field and you're overseeing the quality of the pack. Yes, sir. So you're the one who's responsible for that last decision that when somebody goes in that supermarket and picks up that watermelon with your label on it, they know they're going to get a good watermelon. Yes, sir. That's a lot of trust for a third is. generation guy. I know it, yep. Where do you see this going from here? How old were you when you looked around and said, yeah, I guess I'm going into watermelon business. Or was it, did you have a choice? Did you ever Yeah, think I've always had else? a choice. I mean, my parents have always made me very aware that I do have a choice, but my dad's always been a really good role model, so I've mm -hmm. always kind of wanted to do what he did. So yeah, Never thought about anything else? Nope. That's awesome. It is. Greg, you built a pretty sizable watermelon operation here in the middle of the watermelon capital of the world. Did you ever stop and think, what do I want to do with my life? Or did you just kind of just go, well, I'm on my path? Yeah, there was a few times there um, in my late teens that I thought that I might not want to be this hot, uh, work this hard. But, you know, it's, you just push through it and, um, it turned into to be a gratifying uh, choice for me and my family. So at what point did you come into the picture and were you that kid who you were five years old and they were dragging you by the arm saying, come on, we're picking watermelons, let's go. Or Yeah, I grew up in the business and, and, and you know, as, as soon as we were able to throw a watermelon, we were, we were in the field and um, used to the, the semi trucks would come over to the market there and right. we would haul the watermelons in from several different locations to the market and pack them in straw in the back of the semi trucks. Mm -hmm. And um, that was all bulk. And, um, and then we finally got so that we had some conveyors um, as, our, as, as years progressed and we started conveyor belting them in there, which was, we were all grateful to see that. Yeah. And, and then, of course, it's it's moved on into cardboard bins now. But yeah, I grew up um, throwing watermelons, picking watermelons, and then I learned to pack watermelons, uh, stack them in the trailer bulk because mm -hmm. that was I got paid more for that. And as soon as I got a little stronger, got a few years on me, I was able to pack. You do know there's no such thing as a <laughs> retired farmer, right? That's right. I mean, that just doesn't happen. Yeah, we've tried to structure the business so that I can at some point uh, step off the merry-go-round and, and these young people that I've got in place are, are really, Will Hintz and Jordan Carter are, are, have been with me for 10 years and they're, I, if I was to get sick tomorrow, I would know that this business would carry on as if I was still here. And that's gratifying to know. In my so pretty much any time from now forward, if you so choose, you can just start getting in the truck with Mr. Buddy and coming up here and causing trouble. Yeah. All right. We'll look forward to that, Greg. Yeah, that sounds We're good. We're going to come back and check on that one. All okay. Right? <laughs> that sounds good. They could not run this place without you. <laughs> About that. <laughs> How long have you been here? This is my 10th domestic season. The job fell in my lap. I came from a fashion um, background. Fashion? Yeah, fashion background. Um, 
I graduated from Georgia Southern University with a degree in fashion. In Statesboro, Georgia. In Statesboro, Georgia. With a degree in fashion. In fashion. So I knew nothing about But ag, you grew but up in Cordell. I did. I did. I knew I liked watermelon, but I didn't know a whole lot about watermelon. And you became the first female president of the National Watermelon Promotions Board. I did, that was very special for me. It was a wonderful experience, um, not only to just serve on the board, but to serve as president. It was truly amazing. Um, I learned so much about what the board does um, for watermelon consumption and how vital they are to our industry. Mm -hmm. We're um, appointed by um, the Secretary of Agriculture of the United States, and it's uh, uh, 30 people on the board. That's and, pretty significant. Um, it's very when the, significant. When it's the a USDA huge deal. Secretary it, is uh, saying, yes, yes. Yeah, um, I think Jordan needs to be on that. <laughs> but I learned so much from the experience. Um, it's one that I'll definitely cherish. If you ask me the time I've spent in Cordill, Georgia, I would have to say watermelon is the heart of Cordill, Georgia. It plays such a major role, not only in our community, but in the economy. You know, it's important for us to produce a good crop and to see a stable market and we need all these things to you know uh, maintain supply and increase demand for Georgia watermelon. It's, it's important for us and you know what's cool is we have a whole festival surrounded by nothing but watermelon and it's a fun time you know we come together as a community and we celebrate what we're famous for, watermelon. What makes it the watermelon capital of the world. That's right. Oh, ladies, I'm telling you what, it is hot in Cordell, Georgia. We started out this morning, we had five watermelon queens. I'm looking around now, we lost one around lunchtime. We lost one about an hour ago. Y'all gonna drop out anytime soon? You okay, you with me? You know, as hot as it is, and I think somebody just told me the heat index is 109 degrees. The only thing that could make this better would be if this giant piece of watermelon was real. Wouldn't that be nice about right now? So, meanwhile, we're going to sit here a watermelon? and- Oh my goodness gracious! Look what just came. Ladies, have, let's have watermelon. Please, take some watermelon. Ladies first. You especially pretty. And ma'am, if you would go next. And Tamala. Man, you're right on time. You know what? <laughs> you can tell you work for the Chamber of Commerce. This is a tourist attraction, but what's really a tourist attraction and part of what we're looking at, these lovely ladies here. This yes. is not a beauty pageant. This no. is an ambassador program. And we and are proud to have them when represent. they're that big, and it goes till they're that big and keeps going. And it's training out people who know how to represent Cordell and the watermelon industry. That's right, Chip. Wow. All right. Look, I'm going to have to get off this asphalt or we're going to be smelling barbecue in a minute. So, mm. that helps a lot. The real reason there's any reason to put a rocket ship by the interstate to make people stop is because of the watermelon business. Watermelon business has been huge here for years and years and years, and will continue to be. It's just the right environment, it's the right, the right land to grow watermelons, and it's just become part of who we are here at Cordia. People can come uh, cool their heels at Lake Blackshear for a while and carry a couple of watermelons somewhere. We'd love to see you. You don't get any more American than watermelon and missiles and planes and we're proud of it. <laughs> well, I think and nothing screams America to be sure like watermelon in the summertime. That's right. Without watermelons, I mean, it would be a huge hit to our economic impact in town. I mean, we, millions and millions of dollars from watermelons come to our community. If you just stop in Cordial, Georgia and get gas to see the rocket, that's a worthwhile visit. But if you don't stick around a few minutes, you're missing a whole lot. You are, and a lot of times people come, they'll stop, but then they'll get to looking around and say, hmm, you know, this town is different. This town is unique. 
and then especially if they come by the chamber and then we will tell them the whole story and they come back. To me, everything I see in Cordell just screams, we're American and we are yes. so proud of that. And in Cordell, it's about traditions and it's about values and we value the watermelon, what it means to us, agriculture, it's in our roots. This is what brought me to Cordell, Georgia 50 years ago. It was watermelons that brought me back. Every time I come here, I find something a little more special. That's what makes it one of my favorite little towns in America, just like so many others out here where the food comes from. <laughs>